and grab everything I can. I mean, my notes section then also, it's like your emails. It gives me anxiety because eventually you get to a point where there's so much in there. I'm the same. And I go <laughs> back and I'm like, what is all this stuff that I didn't want to forget? Like, I don't even know I what know. it is anymore. I know. <laughs> so you just cut and paste and put yeah. it in your notes? Yeah, I threw everything in there. So that way it's just like I've got locks and key combinations. I've got passwords. I've got everything. Yeah. If anyone tried to steal my phone, they'd have no idea what any of it means. <laughs> um, all right. Well, let's, the... get, let's kick off with uh, fitness. Angela, okay. what I'll do again today is just go through a short presentation so you get a full understanding on how the fitness section of your phone works. Oh, well, more so... Um, actually the the different ways that fitness will work for the different health types um, so first of all with the exercise your exercise will vary for the health types in the way where it'll vary on the time so the time of day how often they exercise what type of exercise how long they should exercise and how intensely they should exercise. And what we're looking at with exercise is what is the minimum effective dose, particularly with activators so that we don't overtrain. So I start with activators. Um, activators normally have really good body awareness, really good um, hand-eye coordination. They're likely to go hard and they like the variation. So with an activator, if they're not seeing results, they're more likely to just go harder than to look at other reasons why they might not be getting results, which a lot of the time leads to burnout. So they train, we, they train the way that they do everything, which is hard and fast. The thing they need to remember to do is rest. So activators want to move daily, every day. Intensity can vary. Um, normally high intensity, short duration sessions. In saying that, if you're going for a, like I go for a walk in the morning, uh, it's not very intense, but it's moving and that's my form of meditation. This is more the training. So training that I'll do in the afternoon will be about 45 minutes and it will be moderate to high intensity. Uh, the best type of exercise to get the hormones. Um, okay, wait, I have a question. Uh, uh, if you don't mind. Okay, yep. Uh, intensity, I've never seen that. Is there yep. a line that says yep. intensity? I okay, like... so I'll run through them all and then we can answer all the questions. I'll, we'll run through that at the end. Okay. Yep. Um, yeah. And this will be ultimately for the activator. So high intensity, um, a little bit of metabolic conditioning, as many rep, AMRAP means as many reps as possible. So you might have a 20 minute block and you'll do as many reps or a cycle many times you go through a circuit and you measure that. So CrossFit, Team Games, Animal Flow. We do take into consideration where the person is starting at. So we wouldn't get you doing a high, a high impact 20 minute unwrap straight off the bat. We, we wouldn't do that with you. We would alter it depending on where the client's at. But this is generally how activators will train. But I mean, you are you. So we'd obviously um, cater it for you. So generally how it will go with um, an activator, this is how their day normally looks, and you might find this in your app as well, is in the morning, just light to moderate cardio, so just breathing and to get moving. Quite often after that, in the mid-morning between 8 and 11, there'll be a burst of energy. This is where um, Dr. Garoli actually recommends the activators do their big workout. Uh, after that, we're better off doing working and stuff that we use our mind for. Uh, Mid-afternoon is a great play time where we can do our more resistant work. Then if we haven't moved through the day, that late afternoon time is a good time to sort of get the, rid of the excess energy. And then it's a good time to start to rest. Uh, so the connectors, they're a little bit more resistant to exercise, uh, well, resistant to getting results than the activator. They, they want to see the results faster, but they need a little bit more time and consistency and more volumes of work. They also enjoy the variety in their sessions and they like to have people around them. So they like to be social while they exercise too. So they can exercise one or two times a day, preferably having the cardio in the morning, a higher intensity, 
to get the results because they are a little bit resistant. Um, half an hour to an hour or longer. They really enjoy team sports, uh, CrossFit, Olympic lifting, and the group fitness with the connectors. Uh, how their day will look is to have the cardio in the morning, uh, then get into work. Uh, Mid-afternoon, any time in the afternoon, they can do their mixed strength or their training. So they actually respond really well to circuit type training over a longer duration. Uh, and then it, again, will start to drop off during the evening like the activator. Uh, the Guardian, the Guardians and the um, Diplomats, they, in, they feel safe when they're heavy. So they actually have little receptors in their joints that like to feel heavy. So particularly when they're losing weight, we need to load them up with quite a lot of weight so that they still feel safe. They're likely to conserve some of their energy and never give it 100%. They're likely to hold back about 10%. Um, and this is because they don't want to feel like they've drained all of their resources because guardians are giving. If you drain them of all their resources, in this case, energy, they will go into conservation mode. So actually make them gain weight if you push them too hard. Uh, frequency, they need to move three to five times a week. Intensity can vary. So you can, if they choose to, and if they've eaten, you can push them to 100% or they can choose to go to 100% as long as it's for a short, intense duration. And then they can recover for a long time afterwards. So this is what we call a high intensity interval type exercise where you push them into a high intensity just for a short period of time. And then you'll give them a rest for say three or four minutes. So different to high intensity interval training where the rest rep work ratio will be one to one or one to two. Um, they really enjoy their strength and power lifting, but the longer intensity um, steady state cardio is great to get the, the, fluid moving and the lymphatic draining similar to the um, uh, diplomat as well. So the guardians will build through the day. So it's great for them to get moving here and get some um, circulation happening late morning to afternoon. They can do some strength training here. Uh, or some the moderate intensity, uh, it's not till the afternoon where it's better to go really, really hard because they've had a big meal before that or they've eaten most of their food before their training. So they don't get that feeling of deprivation. If, mm. if, if a guardian has eaten, has um, done a big workout here, they can eat a little bit more at night time. It's the guardians you see in the gym at five and six o'clock then? Preferably, if they're, if they're following their chronobiology, yes. <laughs> so the diplomat, they have a slower ATP conversion, which means it takes them longer to recover. They actually, uh, ATP is the system that we use to, con to transfer energy. And so if they've done a big workout where they've had, or a big um, bout of activity where they've executed a lot of energy in a shorter period of time and it actually takes them longer to recover. Um, they avoid pain also. Diplomats seek pleasure. So if I were to give a diplomat a really hard workout and they were sore, they would remember forever and they wouldn't want to do it again, normally. Uh, recommended frequency is to strength train three times a week, have a rest day in between and then longer intensity movement on the other days. Intensity 60 to 70, or you can go up a little bit higher, they will hold back a little bit uh, like the Guardian. Uh, longer frequencies, so uh, half an hour to over an hour. They can do PHA training, which is peripheral heart activation, which is when you go upper body, lower, upper body, lower body, so the heart has to work harder to shunt the blood up and down. Uh, the high intensity, um, I always forget what this is called and it's, I, I don't know why, but the, Shana, remind me, high intensity, um, I just said it before, the same as the Guardian where it'll either be Similar to the HIIT training, where it's one HIIT training with one to one or one to two ratio, this is one to three or one to up to one to five ratio. 
of work to rest or work to recovery, five by fives. So again, the power lifting type training, and they really enjoy um, getting into nature and actually helps with their ATP conversion to get into nature. So hiking and swimming and doing their steady state cardio uh, in nature is really great. And another type of training. Cool. I really like isometrics too. And um... yeah, and it's not to say activators can't do isometrics because you probably like the um, the challenge of it. However, and for swimming, the that, and, swimming yes. and hiking, I don't yeah. Know. yeah, and it's not to say activators can't do that. Activators can do anything. It's just this has added benefits for the diplomats. So the isometric training, because their connective tissue is a little bit um, more lax the isometric training helps to, to create some stability in the joints. So activators generally like any type of movement and it, you should do any type of movement, but we can, we can go on to that a little bit. Um, I've just got a couple more to go, I think maybe two. So the diplomat is not dissimilar to the guardian. Can, they can move in the morning as long as it's not stressful to move in the morning. So as long as it's at a nice steady pace, they warm up a little bit. They can start to move a little bit more around midday. They can do a little bit more around 12 to 3. But again, their optimal training time is after they've eaten. And this is where they can really um, drain their energy reserves. Sensor. The sensors, the exercise is last uh, priority for the sensor. So the sensor, one of the main priorities is with all their exercises to keep warm. But it'll actually cause them stress if they're cold. Um, and they'll like a lot of detail and to know exactly what it is. They also like to, and I haven't put this in there, they like to engage their mind while they move. So that's why you'll find a lot of senses of ballet dancers. They quite like Tai Chi, yoga, because they can engage their mind while they move. So it's not imperative for them to move a lot. So it's, it's, it's not a lot of frequency, um, not overly high intensity. They can go for 30 to 60 minutes, depending on what they're doing. Their weight training, lightweight, high rep. Otherwise, more the yoga, tai chi, dance, and more um, low-key movement. Who is specific. a celebrity sensor? Who is somebody I would know as a sensor? Mm. Good question. Um, Shana, can or, you think of them? Or Nicole? anybody, anybody in... Uh, in um, PH360, is Bex a uh, sensor? Yeah, yeah, Bex is a sensor. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Bex is a sensor. Uh, Shanae, one of my clients, you've met Shanae. Shanae is a cusp of sensor to diplomat. Um, mm -hmm. Nicole Kidman is a cusp sensor to, to diplomat. Like, she's very close. Um, but all of your ballet dancers and, and big performers, they're all a lot of sensors. Sensors will keep to themselves a lot. <laughs> Um, lots of musicians are sensors, and so mm -hmm. you'll see a lot of. That's why they're reluctant front people a lot of the time, reluctant mm -hmm. performers. Mm -hmm. So the sensor, um, it's really about reducing stress, so not causing too much stress. But again, the optimal time for them is to work is to move in the afternoon, and that's simply because they're normally warmer. Um, okay, last one. Oh, is that my last one? Where's Crusader? That was the second one you did. No, I haven't done Crusader. Mm -hmm. that, that was the second one. What's oh, the second one? It's Crusader. Oh. Uh, so Crusaders, um, they're more of your endurance athletes. They like to be able to measure their data as well. So these are the, the athletes that you'll see doing the long distance marathons and tracking the data from when they've gotten up at 5 a.m. to ride their bike for 120 kilometers before they get to work. That's generally your crusader. Uh, the crusader will need the mobility and the stretching in between their high intensity work. Uh, and this is more for their spine. Quite often the crusaders will get a buildup of calcium and stiffness through their spine. Intensity will be low to moderate. 
and this is because the duration will be for so long quite a lot of the time and they're more endurance athletes so for endurance they'll love the repetitive rhythmical um, types of training like swimming and cycling but also really enjoy the HIIT training and they're actually really good at it because they can clear out the waste products really quickly uh, the stretching that they'll that they need to do that quite often they're reluctant to do yoga tai chi anything to mobilize the spine and the weight training is moderate to high reps and anything that brings endurance into the muscle. So your supersets, your drop sets and your failure based type training. So again, they similar to the activator where they get up and they start moving, preferably some stretching to get the spine mobilized. Then to start to oxygenate the body, they can do some, some cardio type work. And then in the afternoon is the better time for them to do their weight training. Most people are better resistant training in the afternoon. Uh, and fun fact, most of the world records are set in the afternoon because the, our bodies are more primed for activity then. What does then that again, mean, failure-based? Failure-based means you can push them to they can't do any more. Crusaders like the challenge of going above and beyond. So they like to be able to feel like they did more than anyone else. They like the, the um, it gets them a little, gives them a little bit of a hit. Uh, then towards the afternoon, you want to start to calm the crusader down. So exercise can be good in the evening if it's taking their mind off their thoughts and bringing them more into their body so that they can start to disengage and calm down. So that's how the different ex um, health types will train differently. So now what we can do is check in and see. I know uh, Shana mentioned to me earlier on yesterday that you were still not clear about what to do with your exercise. So we'll go through like, where have you planned it into your week? What are you thinking of doing? And then keeping in mind what is optimal for you. At this point in time, don't stress too much about the details for you. Just getting movement in is going to be the top priority. And so what are your concerns or what have you done so far and, and where do we go from here? Okay. Um, well, every morning, um, sometime between seven and nine, I do my five rights, which is a lymphatic system, system movement, um, stretching, um, a little bit of Qigong and that kind of thing. It's about a 15 minute routine. And uh, just, you know, it's not, I don't, it's not cardio. <laughs> you know? It's okay. It's, it's movement, which is great. Yeah, it's movement. And I'm, um, yeah, and I, I really like that. I, I call it my cup of coffee. You know, I, I don't drink coffee. And that just, uh, when I start slapping my face and, and, and rocking my my body that you know it just wakes me up so that's really good and then um i looked at my uh, my wheel and when i made my chart i put fitness down between one and three perfect um and then i have uh i have also put in the evening um qigong and i i put the five rights every day and I do them every day. I put in the fitness every day, but that's part of what I'm not sure of, you know, if I need to do every other day or what. And, uh, and if I need to do more cardio two or three times a week and less or, you know, that, that thing. And then at night I put Qigong, which is, um, it is strength, but it's more relaxation. For me, it's more meditation than it is an exercise yeah. but it is also movement and I, I um I only do that maybe two to four times a week it, you know I just do it when I want to do it but I do it at night like um eight o'clock yeah um yeah I would say that it sounds pretty good you're moving every day the only thing you're unsure about is what to do in that that one to three, that ultimate time when you want to be training, yeah. So for you, I'd say given the, the where you're at is you could easy every second day do some form of resistance training and you could get the intensity up a little bit but keep the duration to about 20 minutes. 
in total for, for everything for everything i do no just for the if we're putting some resistance training in the afternoons it's a little bit higher intensity you're moving every day which is the main thing the higher intensity resistance work would be great for you at this point in time i would say 20 minutes every other day four times a week mm. would you concur shana and you could split that up uh, probably to focus on some upper body work one day, some lower body work another day. So you could put your, you could mix it up as far as if you really like the isometrics, put them in there. And then, so say you were doing an isometric wall squat, you could then, an activator can easy then move into some air squats or some body weight squats. Yeah, okay. Um... Yeah, things things like plank and um, yeah. and and yeah, wall wall squats. I mean, those are things I do for my dance um, yeah. when I'm dancing. I haven't been dancing for six weeks, but mm. um, you know, and and um, and for my legs and stuff. And then um, also, I do well. I broke my shoulder last year. And I had eight and a half months of um, therapy on that, but it was, you know, of course, both sides of my body. She, she did both of me. <laughs> and um, a lot of work with the TheraBands. Awesome. Perfect. A lot of that work. And, yeah. and uh, you know, this kind of stuff and whatever, and got my, got my... Um, Biceps? Well, yeah, my... What I want to say, you know, anyway, before I, I, I didn't have anything. I just had a stick here, you know, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I got my muscle, I got my deltoids, I got my lats, I got, I got things back. Yeah. Um, so perfect. Yeah. I would, uh, I would start getting that sort of um, work in every other day. And the good okay. thing about activators is you can push yourself a little bit. So you don't really have to go easy on yourself because if you keep the duration low, you will recover. So the thing with activators is they go, stop, go, stop. So if you're pushing yourself hard, as long as you're resting after that, then you'll recover from that. Okay. And what about cardio? I haven't done cardio for a year and a half very much at all because I was having these terrible spikes in my blood pressure and I used to stand on my head every day and that stopped a year and a half ago. They said, don't, you know, and I haven't done it since. And uh, I don't do any inversions. Mm -hmm. uh, my, my blood pressure is controlled now and it's very low and I take a very low dose of, you know, but I'm kind of afraid to, to start it too, too much more, mm -hmm. but I don't know. I mean, I feel like I need, you know, I, I, I need some cardio, but I was reading about burst, you know, for the activator burst, um, even 30 seconds or one minute. And I was just thinking yesterday, you know, um, I live on the 12th floor and of course I'm not going to run up 12 floors, but I can do one floor. I can just go up and down one floor. I can just go out in the hall and go up and down one floor and come back home and, you know, yeah. Yeah, definitely. A hundred percent. If, and you can even, while you're doing the resistance work in between, you can go and do one floor and come back. So activators love that where you've got, you, if, if you're doing just slow resistance work, you, you will, you want to get the, you want to get the release of energy. So certainly in between the resistance work, you can do short bursts or if it gets to the afternoon time and you haven't done any movement that you feel like is hard enough, you want to get the energy out. You want to drain that energy. So five minutes of walking stairs is a great way to do that. And you'll find that you'll come back and you'll be able to concentrate a little bit better. Yeah. I just now got back in. It was my, my dia de salir shopping and stuff. You know, I get one day a week when I can go out. So I go out three times you know mm -hmm. i go to this store and i walk the long way around yeah and i walk and i walk fast and you know and uh anyway i just came in just before this and 
from my third walk today and I and it was a little bit uphill it's the last one and it comes up the up the boulevard and um, boy you know I just I haven't walked for six weeks yeah except for once a week and and, and it's like oh my god you know yeah. my legs they just don't work you know yeah and I mean there'll there'll be an element of detraining for most of us who are in isolation I mean I'll go back to the gym and I'll feel the same because I'm not squatting however whatever I used to squat I'm not sitting on I'm not bench pressing I'm doing push-ups so we all will to a certain extent we've just got to make do with what we have and if you have stairs then you can use the stairs yeah because I'm I'm realizing that I've been in isolation almost six weeks five and a half weeks and I have another six weeks to go yeah um, and and so this is like okay you got to get with the program Angela you got yeah you got to get serious you can't just keep saying oh I don't know what to do I don't know what to do yes and there's plenty you can do I mean your body is a great way to use resistance so there are body weight exercises that you can do you've got the bands that you can use um, to provide some resistance you have stairs you have a trampoline so it's about using all the things around you I mean lots of us have got very creative with how we're moving our bodies I know I have <laughs> Yes, and I have a Pilates ball, and I have a yoga mat. Yeah. And, um, you know, I have weight. I have hand weights, and yeah. uh, and I also have a sauna. Yeah. You know, and um, so we have a jacuzzi in the building, but of course it's closed. Mm. I do that, and a steam room, but that's closed too. Yeah. But the sauna is mine in my apartment. So. Oh, great! Yeah. Yeah. So, in. In saying that, if you are you able to put the, those resistance, those short bouts of resistant work, which can be a little bit higher intensity every other day, three or four times a week. You mean running up and down the stairs, the burst? Yep, the burst is with the resistance work. So your squats, your lunges, using the bands. Ah, um, and and can I do this every other day? Sure. Like, yeah. Is that what you're asking me? Yeah. yeah, of course I can do Great. it. I mean, I have it on my card for every day. Yeah, but Excellent. Um, you know, so every other day I should do lower intensity and higher intensity. But but, but all of you is only twenty minutes. Yeah, okay. keep them to shorter, higher intensity bursts. See how you feel. Start with every other day because you might be a little bit sore if you're just starting to do it again. If you're a little bit sore, rest. If you're not and you feel like doing it again, go again. Mm -hmm. Listen, if, if you're sore, the hard thing about activators is they'll want to do things every day, higher intensity. But if you're sore, you'll need a rest of the body. Yeah. And then I could still, um, even if I did a low intensity thing, I could still do a burst. Yeah. In the late afternoon. Yeah. And I feel like doing a burst in the morning, uh, you know, right after my rights. In fact, you know, uh, I don't know if you know, but on the, on the uh, immune booster days, they have a little video for mm -hmm. my activator, you know, at the, at the top. And the one they did on day one, they're now repeating on day five, six, and seven, or, you know, towards the end. And I love that one. Great. I love that one. You know the one it is? It's the skate, the skater, and then the jumping jacks and stuff. Yeah. Excellent. And, and um, I'm trying to figure out a way to, to capture that video so I can have it after I'm done with the immune booster. But um, I, I don't know. Do you know if we can keep them, Shana? You might have to get a, um, a video downloader. Um, you might have to Google because I'm pretty sure they've stored them in Vimeo. So I would actually get in and cheeky Google and um, say Google Vimeo downloader um, and see if you can. There'll be some app or some shortening that you can do to grab them. Um, if that's if, if you when it's playing on the screen, if you tap the screen and something might pop up that might give you a menu or an option to download. Um, but the only other thing you could do, and I would assume it's actually going to be in the back end of your app already. 
if you go into your exercise section inside of Shea, there should be that and or other training very similar to it that are already pre-made. So at any point in time, everyone, every health type can go into their Shea app, go into exercise and pick out a fitness play program or a um, exercise program around resistance training that is specially designed for your body type and whatever equipment you have. On my computer? Yep, computer, phone, anywhere. Any Shea app that you have, you will be able to access that in the exercise section. Okay, now my computer, okay, I just opened and it's got a dashboard and it's got all these things and the, and the ninth one at the bottom, it says Shea Beta. But nope. you, you're saying you see, Shea meaning the whole thing. Yep, can and you see a tab there that says fitness? Yeah. Click that. Go to that. Hello. Okay. And then it has strength, cardio, flexibility, exercise is good for you. I don't see anything that says videos. So click on strength. And then there should be some drop down boxes to the left hand side that says beginner, moderate, intense. Yeah. Or yep. uh -huh. So choose whichever one of those you want to go. Let's go with moderate for today. Intensity and moderate. Yep. Now let's go to the next drop down box. Skill level, moderate or intermediate. Yep. Cool. And then the next drop down box. Equipment, none. Yep. Great. Let's uh, select that one. And Region, full body. Yeah, beautiful. And then, and then generate workout. So it's just a bunch of individual things. It's so not you can, a video. So mine are, it's not always a video. Then if you go into... They do video it sometimes though. Yeah, some of them are videos. So let me just bring up Shay. No, there should be a section there that has pre-made videos. Mine's yeah. all videos in cardio. Cardio's videos, yes. Oh, cardio. Okay, well, I was in strength. But strength there. Okay, here's cardio. Yeah, a bunch of videos. Yeah. I don't, I don't have see a little play paper. around in your app. So you can... um. It'll generate the workouts for you. I can't believe we haven't. It's uh, it's one upgrade I've been requesting for quite some time. Get ready to build strength and get restless with a 200 rep body weight workout. Let's do this. Where are you? 200 reps. Oh my god. All right, you guys. Let's start with a little warm up. It's gonna be some. <laughs> and when with the strength workouts, when you press on the actual exercise, it'll run a short video. Okay, and the same with flexibility. So it'll give a demonstration. Yeah. So it'll have the workout for you. So mine has a lunge, a squat, a dumbbell bench press, a push up, an upright row, and it's got the actual workout there and the, yeah. the so list of exercises. And then I yeah. press on it if I'm not sure and yeah. it'll give so you a video. Yeah, strength and car. Um, so cardio and flexibility have videos on how to with um, a workout in them, but strength is one where you choose your individual decisions. I'm assuming off the back end of what we've created now, they've created a bunch of workouts. So I assume the next upgrade will auto populate with a bunch of pre made workouts. Okay, and then flexibility says how long do you wish to work out? 10, 20, 30 minutes. And then if I say 20 minutes, it gives me six exercises and each exercise has a short video. Yeah. So, okay. Can we be in? Now, how do I get rid of this and get back to my Zoom? I uh, just go to... <laughs> I got it. I got it. Yeah. I got it. <laughs> Oh my God. I spent an hour today uh, with a friend trying to get me on a bank app, getting me on two bank apps to transfer money from one bank to another bank. Oh my God. I just, I mean, technology and me are just not friends. <laughs>
Yep, I totally get that. When you're friends, you, you're making friends with technology, though, by the sounds of it. <laughs> yes, yes. You know, if I do it 20 times, maybe I can remember it mm-hmm. for at least a week. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you feel more comfortable now with the training plan, with some other resources that you can use? Yeah, okay. That yeah, that's much better because like I said, I just put it all on there and I just think, okay, what am I gonna do today? And I have these little videos like from my therapy, you know, with the fair bands and this and that and that, that and I just do a couple of those and you know, I don't really know what I'm doing. Mm. Yeah. So this is good. Yeah. Excellent. Good. I'm can glad. you show me? Can you show me the first page of the activator again? The one you started with, the said intensity. Yeah, and and see, I was looking on there. And, oh, it it tells me to pick out my intensity. I see. I see. Okay. So here. Right. No, here. no. The first page. The very first one. number one slide. Number one slide. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Okay, frequency, daily, intensity, 70 to 90. Yeah, and if it's a walk or if it's you're still moving, it's okay if it's not always high intensity because even when I walk in the morning, although my, sometimes I want to run when I'm walking, so I probably do bump it up around 70 because I just want to, same thing, I want to run. Um, Mm. But yeah, if it's the longer time, then you'll go lower intensity, but these little short bursts can be a little, and it doesn't mean 80 to 90% of intensity the whole time. It just means you reach there within the session. Okay. And then would you tell me, I don't know what a single one of those things are at the bottom. Hit, head, con, I don't know what any of those are. High intensity interval training will be where you have a period of time where it's really high intensity. So you might be going up the stairs and then down the stairs, up the stairs, down the stairs. So Mm -hmm. at this point in time, for you, I wouldn't say do 20 minutes of that. But you could put a couple of stair runs to get you up around the 80 or 90% within the other sessions within the okay. within the session so between the other exercises so you're putting a little hit of intensity that gets you up around 80 or 90 percent but only for a short period of time and then you can go back to lower intensity exercises okay an amrap that means as many reps as possible so it would mean if you did a little circuit designed by Shay and you timed it for 20 minutes and you saw where you got up to then next time you went okay last time I got three rounds this time I want to get three and a half so it's a little thing that activators like to do because they really enjoy competition more each time it's just an example I, I enjoy competition with myself Great. So if you say within the um, exercises, you go by time, even if it's say um, 45 second stations and the first time you got 12 reps out and the second time you're like, well, this time I want to get 14. That's a way of doing AMRAP. So you, you can, uh, you can beat yourself or it's just like a little mini competition within the circuit. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Metcon? that's metabolic conditioning. So that will be, that's, that's training the body on more of a cellular level. Don't concern yourself too much with that at this point. Okay. CrossFit. CrossFit is a type of training. So you'll see CrossFit's a combination of lifting and gymnastics and high intensity training that is not Best done in a class with a coach to start yeah. out with <laughs> yeah. I, I kind of a um, triathlon <laughs> it's crossfit is it's like a cult <laughs> it's okay. a training cult <laughs> and team sports i know what that is what's animal flow 
animal flow is actually really cool. It's a way of moving the body while um, going through a series of movement patterns that they name after animals. You can look it up, have a little look. I know animal flow is offering. I'm about to do, I, I want to have a look for it myself and actually study it myself at the moment that came up in that reading stage. Um, oh, really? Very yeah, important. Cool. Yeah. So animal flow is incredible. So it's, it's just about using the body and movement patterns that connect all parts of the body. So throughout that space, you'll be, it's like, it's like watching, um, it's almost like ballet, contemporary and jazz mixed in with Pilates and yoga. <laughs> yeah, and so it would be like uh, cat cow in yoga, cat cow, yes. yeah. and upward dog, downward dog. There's bits of that in there, and so that kind of thing. Activators love it because it brings them into their body, and they can really essentially flow through the movements. Diplomats love it because it has. It also has some isometric holds. So it's great for your connective tissue. It's also great to stretch out your connective tissue. So it's, it's animal flow is amazing. So I can, that's an, a known um, name. I can just Google it. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Animal flow. animal flow exercise. Is that? Yeah. If you just Google animal flow, that will come up. Okay. Okay, great. Yay! Anybody watching the replay though, guys, if you have any questions with fitness, let us know. Um, Sage, I love your mind and the way you speak. <laughs> Thank you, Shana. I love your mind and how you speak. <laughs> you always pick up on the bits that I've missed. <laughs> oh, the pattern seeker. <laughs> okay, well, that's good. I'm glad you're feeling a little bit better with all of that. I'm really happy. But shoot through any questions if you have them. Okay, and thank you, Sharna, for that um, for that uh, link mm. um, for the ebook. And um, yeah, I have my chart, and tomorrow's day ten for me. Yay! Wow, good job, excellent job. Uh, I think I might have some salmon tonight. I'm not supposed to, but I'm sure you'll be okay. I'm hungry. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think that you know I've done well, and I think I'm done. You know, I mean, I think I can. Yeah, I just bought some salmon, and my this was my day out into the store, and I bought some salmon. So <laughs> it's my day one today, and I'm hungry already. I woke up hungry. Uh, it's the yeah. anticipation. It's the it's the. Build I always up. wake up hungry. I wake up starving. Mm. <laughs> Every day. Well, so, yeah, I feel you. It's my day one. I'm, I, I'm feeling pretty good. I, I've had a lot of stress since Thursday night with my Toastmasters group. We had a, two officers quit and um, we've just, you know, all weekend we've been interviewing and it's, it's not been good. And um, so I think, I think I'm probably not going to do day 10 wholeheartedly. <laughs> <laughs> I've well to get the definitely spot. felt the benefits already. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right, ladies. Well, thank okay. you so much for being on. Yeah, thank you. And um, we'll probably see you Thursday, yeah? Thursday for the next one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Same time? Yep. Same time. Okay. Muy bien. See ya. Gracias. Muy bien. Okay. Ciao. Ciao. <laughs> Go bottom right. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. Awesome. That was good. Being able to be like, no question at the end. I'm still oh. recording. <laughs> oh, we might have to end it too. Mm, oh.